Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today I'm going to be doing my 2020 NHL Mock Draft Simulation. Now some of you guys have been asking me to do a draft lottery simulation and it's about time I did one. Of course, we do the monthly mock drafts, but those are my top 15 prospect rankings. This is going to be an actual mock draft. We're going to send the top 15 picks. We're going to send the top three as well to see who gets the number one, number two, and number three picks as well. And I'm going to be deciding for each and every single team which player they end up choosing. So, how do I see the 2020 NHL draft going up right now and what is the draft lottery order for today's video. Watch till the end for all my picks and predictions and of course hit that subscribe button if you're new. So for today's simulation, I'm going to be using Tankathon.com. They take all the 15 picks that will be on the lottery, simming them as well to see who would pick top three, and of course the rest of the top 15 picks as well. I end up doing it once this morning, simming one time, and these are the results. Now this top 15 kind of went crazy. I expected to kind of get a boring top 15, you know, to maybe Detroit gets first overall and then nobody ends up moving the top three, but it was just chaos at the top. First and foremost, the Montreal Canadiens get the first overall pick. They jump up eight spots and will pick first overall with the draft being in 2020 in Montreal as well. Ottawa jumps up one spot at number two. Arizona up seven spots at number three. Because their first round pick that they gave New Jersey is top three protected, that means that Arizona would forfeit their 2021 pick, but would get the third overall pick in 2020. You have Detroit who ends up going down three spots, LA at number five, and I'm at number six, Ottawa, who had San Jose's pick at number seven, New Jersey at number eight, Chicago at number two, Buffalo at number 10, and the list goes on. And we're going to be using this top 15 to see where all the 2020 prospects might end up. And we're going to start out with the Montreal Canadiens, who jumped up eight spots to get the first overall pick with the draft being in Montreal. The Habs won't waste any time making this pick. It will be Alexi Lafreniere. And this is just a perfect scenario for Montreal. With the draft being in Montreal and the Habs getting the first overall pick, even if it wasn't a guy like Alexi Lafreniere, that would still be insane. But Alexi Lafreniere being from Quebec, being I'm pretty sure a Habs fan growing up, that will be a perfect situation for them. And of course, we all know Lafreniere would do insane in Montreal. And the amount of jerseys he would sell in the first month of being drafted would automatically make the pick worth it. And then we go on to the Ottawa Senators who come in at the second overall spot who jumped one spot off of LA to get number two. And at that spot, I think it's another slam dunk pick, that being Quinton Byfield. I think the Ottawa Senators are one of the best fits for Byfield right now. And if Ottawa were to get the second overall pick, I don't think there would be much threat of Byfield dropping. Sure, if there are some other teams that go up to that second spot that do have center filled, I can maybe see Byfield dropping. But Ottawa Ottawa is such a great fit for Byfield. I think Byfield would do great there. And just him alongside Brady Kachuk, I think would be nasty for years to come. And now we go on to the third overall pick with the Arizona Coyotes who somehow find themselves picking at number three. And in this spot, I think it is between Lucas Raymond and Tim Stutzel, but in the end, I think they will go for the winger, that being Lucas Raymond. I think Arizona has had enough of drafting centers, and even though Bear Hayden is looking really, really good, they haven't had the greatest luck with that. The last winger they ended up drafting with their first pick in the draft was Brendan Perlini back in 2014, and he's not exactly looking too great. I think for Arizona, they could definitely use some more offensive help, and I think they will go for a forward. They already got Victor Soderstrom in the last draft, so I don't think they'll take Jamie Drysdale, but I think Lucas Raymond is the pick when it comes to skill and solid goal scoring ability. I think Stutzel is a guy that would be good, but at the same time, Raymond I think would be a more perfect fit, especially if Barrett Hayden already taking that number one center spot. And coming in at number four, we have the Detroit Red Wings. And with Tim Stutzel available, I'm not sure there's any chance that Detroit ends up letting him go. Sure, I think they would love to take a guy like Jamie Drysdale, but Stutzel with Marit Sider is almost too good to be true. And sure, they would totally take Alexi Lafreniere, and they would love to have that first overall pick. But sliding back to number four, Tim Stutzel is one of the best players available at that spot. And I think for Detroit, alongside Dylan Larkin as the top two centers on that group would make for a pretty nasty core going forward. 
And if you thought Stutzel was perfect for Detroit, we now go on to the Los Angeles Kings, and in my opinion, they are running up to the stage to get Jamie Drysdale. Jamie Drysdale is almost a perfect fit for the Los Angeles Kings, and even though I think they would, yes, like to have that second overall pick, I think Jamie Drysdale might be the best fit for them in this entire draft. They need a number one defenseman on that back end. And even though I like guys like Tobias Brewer on foot and Kale Clay, I don't know if they're going to be the number one guys like Jamie Drysdale can be. They have enough offense on that team, and the goaltending will look strong for the future. Patterson is a very solid prospect, but that defense is in need of some work, and I think Drysdale will be a perfect fit. Again, would they like to be higher? Yes, but to get Jamie Drysdale at number four is a pretty solid pick. But now going on to LA's Pacific Division rival at number six, that being the Anaheim Ducks. And for me, the Ducks have a pretty big decision to make in this draft, especially if they were to get number six. And with the draft going that way, I think it would be between two big guys, Marco Rossi and Alexander Holtz. Now, Marco Rossi would just be unbelievable for that team. Even though they still have a strong center prospect pool going, he could be a guy that could be a number one center for them. You have Alexander Holtz, though, who will be a right winger too for them and will fix a lot of those goals scoring issues, and just imagining him with Trevor Zegras kind of makes me giddy a little bit, but in the end, I think Anaheim will go for Marco Rossi. Just thinking about a top two center court of Trevor Zegras and Marco Rossi, I think for a team like the Anaheim Ducks is almost too good to pass up. And now going on to the 7th overall pick, the Ottawa Senators, who are going to use San Jose's pick in this one. They already got Quinton Byfield at number 2, and at number 7, I think they will go for Alexander Holtz. Now, I think for Ottawa, it's between, just like Anaheim, Marco Rossi and Alexander Holtz. And if Anaheim were to take Holtz in that spot, I think Ottawa would 100% go for Marco Rossi, Ottawa 67's player. But with the draft going that way, I think Holtz would be the next logical step for them. Even though I think there would be some other contenders there, a guy like Holtz on top of Quinton Byfield would have the supreme playmaker with the amazing sniper and goal scorer in Alexander Holtz. And to me, that's a two forward duo that Ottawa will not want to pass up. And now going on to number eight and the New Jersey Devils. And I was kind of debating what New Jersey would do in this spot because if Alexander Holtz were available, I think New Jersey would go for him. The supreme goal scoring rookie and winger, I think would be a great fit for them. At the same time though, there's not an amazing fit at that spot that is a super steal or anything. But at number eight, I think the New Jersey Devils will take Anton Lindell. He is a center, but can play wing and has played wing for a fair bit of this league this season. And I think that's a great fit fit for the Devils, all things considered. That's a supreme defensive player who I think will be undervalued at this draft. And for a team like New Jersey, they'll get that 2020 first from Arizona. Not as good as they would have hoped, but at the same time, Anton Lindell is a great player and getting him at number eight, to me, is a pretty solid steal. And then we have the Chicago Blackhawks who come in at number nine. And in my opinion, they're one of the biggest wild cards in this entire draft because they could go for forward, defense, goaltending, Pretty much anything is available for them. But at number nine, I think they will be the team to bite for Yaroslav Askarov and will end up drafting him in June. To me, Chicago is one of those teams that, again, is going to be unpredictable in this draft. But if there's any team to be around that 9 to 10 range to take Askarov, I think it is Chicago. Even though they have a couple of decent goalie prospects and Lincoln and is very solid, I don't think they have that true starter for the future. Now with Robin Leonard traded, I'm not sure what they plan to do. But Askarov to me is a pretty solid fit even if they will have to fix that defense for him to have a chance. And now coming at number 10 with the Buffalo Sabres, and for the Sabres who round at the top 10 at 10th overall, I think they're one of those teams that will run up to the podium to scream Cole Perfetti's name coming in at the 10th overall pick. Now I think Chicago would be one of those teams that would have serious interest in Perfetti, but with Askarov, with Chicago number 9, I think Buffalo is the next perfect fit. I'm really not sure where to predict Perfetti in this draft. He's a guy that I can see going as high as five, but also I could see dropping at the same time. He's one of those players that has a pretty spread amount of interest in the NHL draft, but I think Buffalo is one of those teams that is almost a perfect fit. They need a second line center, and now with Dylan Cousins looking more like a winger in the NHL, Cole Perfetti could be the big guy for them and would fix a lot of their center problems too. And now we get into the 11th overall pick with the Winnipeg Jets, and this is where it kind of opens up a lot because there's a lot of different possibilities at this point. But for the Winnipeg Jets, I think they will select Jack Quinn, especially with them getting Billy Hanyola in the last draft. 
and him looking very, very good. I think they're pretty much set on trying to fix that defense, and it will come eventually. But I think they're going to for, go for another forward. At the same time, I'm really not sure which one they will go for, but I think it will be Jack Quinn in the end. I think it could be between him, Seth Jarvis, and maybe Dylan Holloway. But I think Jack Quinn is one of those guys that will be rising a ton from here on to the draft, and him being picked in the top 12 would not surprise me whatsoever. And now coming at number 12 with the Minnesota Wild, and they're just like Winnipeg, a very unpredictable team in this draft, but I think they will go for another forward, even though it would be perfectly Minnesota to go for a guy like Jake Sanderson or Caden Gooley, because we just can't have offense in this world, apparently, for the Minnesota Wild. But I think they will go for a forward, and I think it will be Seth Jarvis. Although I think they will want a super center, a guy that is dialed in as a center. Seth Jarvis can't play center, and I think the possibility is there, even though he is more of a winger. And at number 12, honestly, it's not a bad pick whatsoever. I'm really debating having Seth Jarvis in my top 15 right now, and he likely will make it by the end of the year for how well he is playing. And now coming in at number 13 with the Florida Panthers, I think they're a team that will go for defense in this draft, and they will be the first team to get Jake Sanderson, and the only team by the way. For Jake Sanderson, he's one of the biggest risers in this draft, potentially. Bob McKenzie had him number nine in his mock draft, and who knows where he ends up going. But I think the Florida Panthers are one of the most logical fits, in my opinion, especially if they end up missing the playoffs. Jake Sanderson will be a pretty good add, even though I think there are some better options for Florida at that spot, even for defense. Jeremy Poirier is very, very good. Florida, if you want some tips, look me up. Anyways, Jake Sanderson is a solid defense defenseman, and for Florida, will do his job at the very least. And coming in at number 14 with the New York Rangers, they're a team that I think will go for a center in this draft, and that guy will be Dawson Mercer. Now, Dawson Mercer is also a winger as well, so he has some versatility, but for the New York Rangers, Mercer is a pretty solid pick at number 14, having a great QMJHL season, has been getting better and better as the season has gone on. At number 14, there won't be any superstar stud options, unless they pick a guy like Noel Gundler, at that spot or Jan Meisek, which will be very good, by the way. But in the end, Dawson Mercer is a very solid pick, and for New York, we provide some great two-way ability with some great offensive skills, too. And now we get into the last pick at number 15 with the Columbus Blue Jackets. And at this spot, I think they will pick defenseman Braden Schneider. Now, I think it would be kind of a race for them between Schneider and Caden Gooley. But at the same time, I'm really not sure what Columbus is going to do here, in all honesty, because they picked Liam Foody back in the 2018 draft didn't have a first round pick or a second round pick or a third round pick in the last draft. So I think for Columbus, they will go on the defensive side, but they're kind of wide open. Obviously, they're not going to go for a goaltender since Corpus Allo and Merzlikens are looking pretty good right now. But I think that defense group, especially prospect wise could use a little bit of a boost. They already have some solid options on the forward group when you have Bemstrom and also guys like Foodie coming up. That is pretty much solid for them. But the defense on the prospect pool can use some work and Brandon Schneider as a solid two-way guy would be a pretty solid at 15. But there you have it. Those are my top 15 picks for the 2020 NHL draft as of now. Again, if you guys want to see me do more of this, let me know down in the comments. Might do it like a monthly thing as well, like the prospect rankings, where we do a new simulation of these picks, what the top three picks might end up being. Maybe it's somebody different than Montreal, Arizona, and the Ottawa Senators. Maybe it's Detroit who gets first overall next time. Let me know. But of course, with this video, I need to hear all your thoughts down in those comments down below. Let me know what you think about my top 15 picks, what you agree and disagree with, and also let me know who you think will get the top picks and who you think will be the top picks in the draft as well. Of course, share this video with your friends, get this mock draft out there, and also if you're stopping by or have enjoyed the video so far, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. Make sure y'all click on this card right here to watch all my 2020 draft content. My name is Nathan, and I'll see you guys next video or stream. Goodbye.